Hey there again. So today we're going to try to describe and listen to the sound quality of some of the top tier and best sounding wireless earphones in the world to establish which wireless earphone has the best sound quality, which is king of the hill. So you're going to hear in turn the Sony WF-1000XM3, the Anker Soundcore Liberty 2 Pro, the Anker Soundcore Liberty Air 2 Pro, the Soundcore Liberty Air 2, and the Sennheiser CX400BT. I've seen a lot of videos on this, but none have really been able to pin down and articulate the differences in how they sound. So I'll start with some descriptions of their sound and then let you hear them for yourselves with the usual test tracks. So settle down for the sound descriptions first and then listen out for whether you can hear what I mean when you come to listen to them for yourselves. Welcome to GI Chow. Okay, I'll start by saying that all of these are at least very good sounding and have a generally balanced sound rather than being, say, bassy or analytical with overly bright treble. So doing the exactly the opposite of what's needed to keep you in suspense and watching for as long as possible, I'm going to start with my favourite and work down towards those I consider the most acoustically flawed. But once again, just to reiterate, they all are enjoyable to listen to. Some are just less universal, more suited to particular genres. So starting with the Sennheiser CX400BT, this has the most realistic vocals and overall tonal balance of the group. When you put these in after listening to the others, vocals just snap into focus. It seems like the singer is really there in front of you rather than you're listening to a good recording of the singer. Vocals have a natural fullness and a richness, an intimate voice in your ear presentation. And while those prefer an analytical sound with voices brought to the fore and isolated from the bass sounds, may favour a less balanced sound signature. For me, these are breathtaking. They can't do all of the pure visceral sub bass of Hans Zimmer's Weiser series, but these deliver some TARDIS like magic and as good a representation as I've heard in a TWS form factor. It doesn't go extremely loud, but then again, I've never needed it to go louder than the volume available for my phone or laptop, even when rocking out. This really is the TWS that I think would appeal to most audiophiles who appreciate a balanced and realistic sound with a deep, punchy bass, natural mids and energetic and detailed but never overly sibilant or harsh treble. With these I don't feel like I'm missing too much from my more exotic audiophile headphones and earphones. So moving on to the several Anker Soundcore TWS, my listening notes and sound demo recordings are based on default Soundcore signature equalisation which I found the most balanced however I also use the flat custom EQ to confirm technical performance in areas like detail retrieval and bass impact. I found many of the other equalization settings other than some of the Grammy award winning music producer equalizations to sound unnatural and the proprietary Hear ID just produced too bright a sound. I think the Samsung Adapt Sound is a better job of automatically adjusting equalization to your hearing though I didn't use it. I've got a separate video on that for Samsung users. Now, despite what some reviewers have mentioned, his was not present or at least not noticeable in my 2021 units, below 14 kHz at least. In fact, one can sometimes hear hiss from the original studio recordings themselves as one track ends and the next begins. So if there is this, it's a level below which some studios tolerate. The firmware version was 1.57 on the Liberty Air 2 and 1.26 on the Liberty 2 Pro. So like the CX400BT, the Liberty Air 2 Pro is also well balanced and has very natural vocals, if not quite at a Sennheiser level, with just the odd hint of vocal sibilance plus better bass extension that can always be too much in the ears sometimes. It highlights mids and upper mids particularly, which can make some songs more appealing, but others like those with deeper male vocals thinner. Normally I'm a medium, occasionally large fit with earphone tips, but I needed the extra large tips to get a good seal, sufficient to hear bass frequencies. I was very surprised how close these got to my current TWS sound quality reference, the CX400, once you have the right seal, which in my case, despite the vast array provided in the box, required using some other tips that extended slightly deeper into the ear canal. Now I used some old Sony tips, which happily meant they still fitted on their charging case, but they're not a perfect fit on the very short stem of the earphones, so have occasionally come off in use. It's worth mentioning that switching the ANC on actually changes the equalization you've chosen by boosting the bass. However, I never use them with ANC turned on and have another video on the effect the various ANC modes have. 
that the Liberty Air 2 is the loudest in the group, along with the Liberty 2 Pro, and has both better clarity and more natural timbre than the Liberty 2 Pro. That's particularly noticeable with vocals, plus better bass impact or slam if slightly less bass quantity. They have some upper bass and lower mids roll off, however, which means that upper mids are highlighted at the expense of lower mids. Again, this can make some music with female vocals more appealing, but make male vocals thinner. Also, the bass roll off means one can end up unwittingly pumping up the volume to get its addictive bass kick. However, sub bass representation is nevertheless very good. Instrument separation. Its bass in bass heavy tracks can be a little less than with the more expensive and more recognized audiophile Liberty 2 Pro, with the bass slightly reducing the clarity of the mids. However, overall, I prefer the bass impact to more natural and realistic sounding vocals of the Liberty Air 2. At £65, uh, with vouchers in the UK, the Liberty Air 2 offers tremendous value and is the first mid-price TWS I found that sounds clearly better overall than the MPO M30. Then again, under a year ago, it was almost double the price. So moving on to the Sony WF-1000XM3. This is probably the most famous and recognized TWS in the group. It has a balanced sound, but the softest bass presentation with the least bass impact or kick of the group. And although it's not lacking in bass quantity, sub-bass representation is probably the lowest in the group. It reminds me of a set of studio monitor headphones with very clear mids and a detailed treble that clearly reveals the attack and decay of string sounds. However, vocals can miss some warmth. They simply don't sound as natural and realistic as the best in the group. It also has the smaller soundstage here, despite having one of the biggest driver enclosures. I use the Sony headphones app to prioritize sign quality over stable connection for my listening tests. I couldn't really hear a noticeable difference between the modes, at close range at least. For me, the clinical and analytical nature of the presentation, combined with the lack of bass impact, made them the least engaging of the group. And they're probably the ones that I the least want to listen to. It's also the most expensive, however, it does have reputedly class-leading ANC for earphones, so if you value low-frequency external noise reduction offers, you may want to consider it together with the Liberty Air 2 Pro, amongst other ANC TWS. So the Liberty 2 Pro has probably the least natural sounding vocal timbre of the group, and has the most bass, but a resonant, boomy and less tight and impactful bass with less bass kick than all the others in the group, except for the Sony, which by some margin has the least kick. The bass note resonance can make the sandbox of, say, an acoustic guitar seem overblown. However, it can still be pleasing for genres like EDM, where the accuracy of timbre of instruments is less critical. Cymbals don't have quite the texture and realism of the 400BT, and the timbre of drum hits is less clear. Dynamics are good, but volume changes can be a little bit compromised by their slightly softer style of bass delivery. There is some sense of soundstage, with sounds appearing to come from beyond one's ears, that the sound is not as 3D as a 6400BT. Okay, that's it for the sound of these. Now there are a lot of other things to consider when choosing a wireless earphone, like comfort, security of fit, controls, battery life, and so on. I've not had a major issue with any of these for the ways I use them, but it's definitely worth checking the spec sheets of each in case you need some particular IP waterproof rating or Qi charging, say. So these descriptions are, of course, what I hear, but do you see things the same way? As usual, put on your best headphones or earphones and take a listen for yourself.
what do you think? Leave a comment below and if you've got value you can help others find this content by liking or subscribing below. Now should you decide to buy any of the wireless earphones I've reviewed using the affiliate links in my video descriptions will help the channel make new videos and you'll pay the same price. For now though you all stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.